On a bright morning, I found an old photograph of myself lost inside a forgotten book. Seeing my frozen smile from the past sparked a deep reflection on who I was then and who I've become. It reminded me of Socrates' famous words, urging us to know thyself. But how often do we truly embark on this profound journey of self-discovery? Surprisingly, while many claim to be self-aware, only a few actually explore the depths of their being. Let's peel back the layers of societal expectations and the masks we wear. What truths about ourselves lie waiting to be uncovered today? Together, let's dive into this journey through our video series. Don't forget to subscribe to keep exploring. Think of self-awareness as your guiding light in life's ups and downs. Even though we may be the main characters in our own stories, sometimes we can feel lost amidst the challenges we face. Imagine understanding yourself as having a detailed map in an unknown land. Through self-awareness, we not only recognize our strengths, but also accept our vulnerabilities, turning obstacles into opportunities for personal growth. Picture having the clarity to understand that criticism doesn't define who you are, but reflects the perspective of the person giving it. Self-reflection isn't about withdrawing from the world. It's about forming stronger connections with others. It's like diving deep into your own soul and emerging with a shield that deflects negativity while fostering empathy and understanding. So how do we cultivate this skill? It's like drinking water or breathing, something we do consistently. Every challenge we face is a chance to learn more about ourselves. When faced with difficulties, ask yourself, what does this teach me about who I am? By embracing these reflections, we not only protect ourselves from toxicity, but also pave the way for making informed decisions. Take a look around you. Every interaction presents an opportunity to sharpen your self-awareness. Ultimately, true success lies in mastering ourselves and achieving a sense of calm that's unshakable by external forces. As you embark on your journey of self-awareness, remember that your progress can light the way for others to find their own path. In our life's journey, we encounter pivotal moments, emotional crossroads, that shape not just our present, but also our future selves. Forgiveness and memory stand as guiding stars in navigating these turbulent waters towards inner peace. But how do we strike the delicate balance between forgiving and remembering? Forgiveness isn't about wiping away memories. It's about changing how we feel about them. Imagine yourself as a gardener. Every experience, good or bad, is like a seed planted in the soil of our lives. Forgiveness is like the sunlight that helps new seeds grow in the soil of our hearts. But memories act like a fence, protecting these delicate shoots from past troubles. Think of forgiveness as a soothing ointment that turns scars into stories of strength. It's about releasing the grip of the past, not to forget, but to create space for new beginnings. Just like a tree bends but doesn't break in strong winds, our relationships don't thrive by avoiding conflicts, but by learning from them. As you walk this path, remember that forgiveness opens the door to the future. While memories guide us along our journey, it's about respecting the past without letting it hold us back, using its lessons to shape a brighter tomorrow. Consider how this balance plays out in your life. How can you embrace forgiveness to welcome new experiences while treasuring memories as signs of growth? Move forward confidently with forgiveness as your wings to fly and memories as your roots to keep you grounded. It's by finding this harmony that we feel whole, nurturing strong relationships and building resilience that helps us flourish. Have you ever considered that just like we charge our phones daily for optimal performance, we also need to recharge our own energy. And I'm not just talking about getting enough sleep or taking vacations. I'm referring to energy intelligence. 
the skill of managing your energy in a way that not only benefits you, but also those around you, fostering a tranquil environment and encouraging healthy habits. Take meditation, for instance. Beyond providing a moment of tranquility, meditation is a potent tool for realigning the mind and body, enabling you to reconnect with your core and generate positive energy. Have you ever experienced how a brief meditation session can completely shift your day, infusing it with serenity and productivity? And let's talk about nutrition. Just as we select high-quality fuel for a vehicle's optimal performance, the food we consume can serve as the fuel necessary to optimize our energy levels. A well-balanced diet packed with essential nutrients not only fuels the body, but also nourishes the mind, directly influencing our capacity to remain composed and make sound choices. Here's an interesting observation. Managing your energy isn't solely about personal practices. It also entails understanding how your energy impacts others and how you can positively influence your surroundings. Have you ever noticed how the presence of a calm and centered individual can reassure an entire room? That's the magic of energy intelligence in action. Now take a moment to ponder. How are you currently managing your energy? Are you providing yourself with the right mental and physical fuel to confront life's challenges head on? Remember, integrating small practices into your daily routine, like meditation and mindful eating, can yield significant results. So are you prepared to embark on the journey of intelligently recharging your energy and positively influencing the world around you? If you're finding value in this, leave a comment and like to help spread the message. And remember to subscribe for more insightful content. In our journey toward achieving success and personal fulfillment, there's one essential skill that stands above the rest. The ability to maintain unwavering focus on our objectives. It's not merely about having a checklist of goals. It's about possessing the inner strength to stay the course especially when faced with challenges or individuals who may intentionally or unintentionally try to derail us. Enter emotional intelligence, our secret weapon. Those with high emotional intelligence possess a keen sense of awareness, allowing them to detect and shield themselves from toxic influences. They understand that their surroundings can either fuel their motivation or drain it. But how do they accomplish this? Firstly, through self-awareness. By recognizing their emotions and understanding how they impact their decisions, they maintain a sense of clarity and composure amidst negativity. Additionally, empathy, another cornerstone of emotional intelligence, enables them to grasp the motives behind others' actions without allowing those actions to disrupt their emotional equilibrium. Rather than being swept up in others' turmoil, they use empathy as a shield, enabling them to persevere toward their goals. Let's simplify this with an analogy. Picture your goal as a distant lighthouse on the horizon guiding your way. The waves and storms represent distractions and toxic individuals that may emerge along your journey. Armed with your internal compass of emotional intelligence, you can navigate through these turbulent waters while keeping your gaze fixed on the lighthouse. You adjust your sails, your actions and reactions as needed to stay on course. Now take a moment to reflect. What are the lighthouses you're striving toward? How have distractions attempted to veer you off course? And most importantly, how can you adapt your approach to maintain focus on what truly matters? Remember, success and personal fulfillment aren't just about reaching your goals. They're about the journey and the resilience and emotional intelligence required to overcome obstacles along the way. Stay focused, safeguard your energy and press forward. The true power lies within you. Take charge of your life with the wisdom of history's greatest philosophers. Stoicism in the modern age is your roadmap to resilience, well-being, and prosperity. Transform challenges into triumphs, stress into strength, 
and uncertainty into clarity. Click the link in the pinned comment now to embark on your stoic journey toward a life of success and satisfaction. Get your ebook today. In the vast expanse of human interactions, it's not enough to merely tread water. We must learn to navigate the treacherous currents, especially when surrounded by toxic influences. Imagine finding yourself adrift in a sea teeming with deceptive undercurrents. This mirrors the challenge of dealing with toxic individuals. To traverse these perilous waters unscathed, one must possess emotional stability as their anchor. But how does one cultivate this calm amidst the storm? The solution lies in harnessing the power of mindfulness and adept stress management. Picture your mind as an ocean. Emotions are the waves on its surface, tumultuous and ever-changing. Yet beneath this turbulence lies a deep reservoir of tranquility. Mindfulness serves as the plunge into these depths, allowing you to observe the storm without being engulfed by it. Each moment of mindfulness is a reminder that you are not your emotions, but the expansive sky above. Stress management acts as your guiding compass, offering techniques like deep breathing and positive visualization to steer you back to equilibrium. These practices become your lifeline, helping you recognize the warning signs of a tempest and find refuge before it's too late. Cultivating emotional stability isn't easy, but its rewards are immeasurable. It's akin to constructing an internal lighthouse, guiding you back to serenity even in the darkest of nights. And within this newfound calm, you discover an inexhaustible wellspring of resilience and peace. So, when confronted with toxic individuals, remember, your focus shouldn't be on quelling the storm around you, but finding serenity within yourself. With mindfulness and stress management as your allies, you'll not only weather the turbulent currents, but emerge stronger, navigating life's seas with confidence and tranquility, regardless of the conditions. As we journey through life, we encounter towering obstacles that sometimes seem impossible to surmount. These challenges test our resolve and push us to our limits. Yet, amidst the struggle, there's a truth we must embrace. We all require support. The path becomes lighter and more fulfilling when shared with companions, be they friends, family or professionals, who offer us a guiding hand, a comforting presence or a fresh perspective. Imagine yourself navigating a maze in solitude. You're lost, trying various paths that lead to dead ends. Now envision having a guide, an aerial drone, that provides a bird's eye view of the maze. This drone symbolizes the supportive people in our lives. While they may not possess all the answers, their attentive ears and shared experiences can illuminate unseen paths, guiding us towards solutions previously unseen. When grappling with emotional or psychological challenges, the expertise of professionals serves as a beacon through dense and shadowy forests, Psychologists, therapists and counsellors act as seasoned navigators, familiar with the shortcuts and pitfalls within the labyrinth of our minds. Seeking assistance isn't a sign of weakness, it's an affirmation of strength. It acknowledges our inherent social nature, recognising that our capacity to grow and overcome obstacles blossoms when we open ourselves to receiving aid. The diverse viewpoints and collective wisdom of others are akin to puzzle pieces that, when assembled, reveal the complete picture we strive to comprehend. So, when faced with adversity, remember that you need not brave it alone. Reach out, share your burdens, and allow the multitude of perspectives and encouragement from those around you to guide you toward fresh insights and resolutions. Together, we are fortified, enlightened and infinitely more capable. Have you ever felt overwhelmed because you didn't assert yourself when needed? Well, setting boundaries isn't about building walls. It's about nurturing flourishing relationships and safeguarding your well-being. Picture your life as a garden, 
Boundaries act as fences shielding your precious blooms. Without them, anyone could trample your flowers, right? But with boundaries in place, you decide who enters and how they engage with your space. Have you ever felt drained because you couldn't decline a request? That exhaustion isn't a sign of weakness, but a signal that your boundaries are being tested. Setting boundaries is an act of bravery, declaring this is me and this is what I need to feel respected and secure. By doing so, you not only safeguard yourself, but also educate others on respecting your space, fostering relationships built on mutual consideration. But how can you communicate boundaries without seeming distant or inflexible? The key lies in open communication. Expressing your boundaries isn't selfish. It's a testament to self-awareness and self-worth. It's saying, I value our relationship and want it to thrive. This not only fortifies connections, but also cultivates an environment where everyone feels valued and understood. Now, let's take action. Reflect on your boundaries. Are they clearly outlined? If not, what's the first step you can take today to establish them? Remember, every stride counts on the path to nurturing healthier relationships and honoring your personal space. So, are you ready to embark on this journey of self-awareness and mutual respect together? You know that nagging voice inside your head, the one that always seems to have a bullhorn handy to amplify our flaws and fears. That relentless self-criticism can be a major roadblock on our journey to well-being and personal development. But fear not, with a few savvy techniques, we can turn this critic into a cheerleader, fostering a sunnier self-image and dialing down the anxiety. Let's start with reframing thoughts. Think of every negative thought as a pesky rain cloud hovering over the landscape of your mind. Reframing these thoughts is like discovering a silver lining in those gloomy clouds. For instance, instead of muttering, I'll never get this right, try switching gears to, I'm tackling challenges head on and learning from every stumble. This shift not only eases the pressure, but also plants the seeds for growth and resilience. Next up, mindfulness is a game changer. It's about being fully tuned in to the present moment, observing our thoughts and emotions without passing judgment. When negativity starts swirling around us like a tempest, mindfulness gives us the power to step back, watch those thoughts drift by like passing clouds, and recognize them for what they are transient blips, not immutable truths. Armed with this perspective, we can sift through which thoughts merit our attention and which are best left to evaporate. Then there's gratitude, a stealthy superhero in the battle against negative self-talk. Before you call it a night, jot down three things you're thankful for. This simple act shifts your focus from scarcity to abundance nurturing a more upbeat outlook on yourself and the world at large. Last but not least, sprinkle in some self-compassion. We all grapple with moments of self-doubt and vulnerability, but extending kindness to ourselves as we would to a cherished friend can work wonders. The next time that inner voice starts getting snippy, ask yourself, would I dish out this criticism to someone I care about? If the answer is a resounding no, it's time to recalibrate the conversation. Revamping negative self-talk isn't an overnight makeover, but with dedication and a dollop of patience, we can turn that internal critic into a motivational mentor. And remember, every stride toward positivity is cause for a little celebration. Imagine you're facing a problem, a mountain looming before you, seemingly insurmountable. It's easy to feel overwhelmed, trapped in the shadow of the challenge. But what if I told you there's a different way to approach it? Instead of dwelling on the immensity of the problem, what if we shifted our focus to finding solutions? Picture this, you're hiking in the wilderness and suddenly you encounter a fallen tree blocking your path. You could stand there, staring at the obstacle, feeling frustrated by its presence, 
or you could start looking around for ways to overcome it, perhaps finding a way to climb over or a path around it. This is the essence of the solution-oriented approach. It's about training our minds to shift from dwelling on problems to actively seeking solutions. It's acknowledging that problems exist, but refusing to let them dictate our actions or emotions. Let's take a real-life example. Imagine you're struggling with time management at work, constantly feeling overwhelmed by your workload. Instead of succumbing to stress and frustration, you decide to take a solution-oriented approach. You start by identifying the specific tasks causing the most strain and brainstorming ways to streamline your workflow. Maybe you implement a new organizational system or delegate certain responsibilities to colleagues. Before you know it, you've turned a seemingly impossible situation into a manageable one. But the solution-oriented approach isn't just about problem solving, it's also about maintaining a positive mindset throughout the process. It's about believing that no matter how daunting the challenge may seem, there's always a way forward. It's the difference between seeing obstacles as roadblocks and seeing them as opportunities for growth and innovation. So, the next time you encounter a problem, remember, you have the power to choose your perspective. Will you dwell on the problem or will you actively seek solutions? The choice is yours and it could make all the difference in your journey towards success and fulfillment. In our everyday interactions, conflicts can pop up unexpectedly, threatening to sour relationships. But there's a skillful way to navigate these situations and steer clear of unnecessary arguments. Imagine you're chatting with a friend and suddenly your opinions clash. Instead of diving headfirst into an argument, try active listening. This means really tuning in to what they're saying, even if you disagree. It shows respect and sets the stage for a calm conversation. Empathy is another powerful tool. Put yourself in their shoes, understand where they're coming from. It doesn't mean you have to agree, but it can cool down heated moments and lead to a more understanding exchange. Knowing when to step back is crucial too. Not every disagreement needs to turn into a big debate. Sometimes, it's better to let things slide to keep the peace. And timing matters. Choose the right moment and place for discussions. Avoid bringing up touchy subjects in public or when emotions are running high. Lastly, compromise can save the day. It's not about giving up, but finding common ground. Shift the focus from arguing to finding solutions. This turns conflicts into chances to learn and grow together. So, by listening, empathizing, knowing when to step back, timing your talks right, and being open to compromise, you can dodge unnecessary arguments and keep your relationships strong and positive. In the social world, we often come across people who act friendly on the outside, but might not genuinely mean it. This fake friendliness can lead to misunderstandings and problems in relationships. Learning to spot these signs can help us avoid unnecessary conflicts and maintain real connections. Imagine you're at a party, chatting with different people. Sometimes someone's behavior might seem a bit strange or insincere, like they're pretending to be nice. Trust your feelings about this. If it feels weird or off, it's worth paying attention to. Actions speak louder than words. Watch how people behave over time. Genuine friends will consistently show care and support, not just say nice things occasionally. Be wary of hidden motives. Sometimes people act nice because they want something from you or want to manipulate you. It's okay to be cautious if someone's behavior doesn't match their words. Focus on real friendships. Spend time with people who genuinely care about you and treat you well. Don't feel pressured to interact with those who don't make you feel good. Setting boundaries is important. You don't have to engage with people who make you uncomfortable. Surround yourself with those who make you feel valued and respected. By learning to recognize fake friendliness, you protect yourself from harm and build better relationships based on trust and honesty. Trust your instincts. Watch people's actions. 
and prioritize genuine connections that make your life better. In our ongoing exploration of effective strategies for navigating toxic relationships, let's delve into the concept of emotional shielding. Picture this. Just as a knight dons armor to deflect the blows of adversaries on the battlefield, we can construct an emotional shield to safeguard ourselves from the harmful energy emitted by toxic individuals. Emotional shielding involves cultivating a mental barrier that serves as a protective barrier against negativity. It enables us to maintain our inner peace and confidence even in the face of hurtful words and behaviors. Much like a shield intercepts incoming attacks, our emotional shield intercepts negativity, preventing it from penetrating our emotional core. This shield doesn't render us impervious to pain. Rather, it empowers us to choose how we react to toxic situations. By consciously erecting this shield, we gain the ability to deflect negativity without absorbing it into our psyche. This allows us to preserve our emotional well-being and prevent toxic influences from taking hold. Imagine yourself enveloped in a shimmering aura of resilience, deflecting negativity with ease and grace. This is the power of emotional shielding, a vital tool in our arsenal for maintaining inner harmony amidst turbulent relationships. So, let's continue our journey by exploring how to construct and strengthen this invaluable shield, ensuring that we emerge from toxic interactions unscathed and empowered. As we navigate the intricacies of managing toxic relationships, let's explore the concept of selective empathy, a skill that allows us to preserve our emotional well-being while still fostering meaningful connections with others. Selective empathy involves discerning when to extend our empathy and compassion and when to withhold it. Just as we carefully select the recipients of our trust, we must also be intentional about where we direct our empathy. Imagine empathy as a precious resource, limited yet incredibly valuable. By practicing selective empathy, we learn to allocate this resource wisely, reserving it for those who reciprocate our kindness and respect. Consider a garden. We water the plants that flourish and bring beauty to our lives while carefully weeding out those that threaten to overshadow them. Similarly, we nurture relationships with individuals who uplift and support us while setting boundaries with those who drain our emotional energy. Selective empathy doesn't mean shutting ourselves off from the world. Rather, it's about safeguarding our emotional well-being by establishing boundaries with toxic individuals who may take advantage of our compassion. By embracing selective empathy, we honor our own needs and boundaries while still fostering meaningful connections with others. So let's continue on this journey of self-discovery and empowerment, learning to navigate the complexities of human relationships with wisdom and grace. As we delve deeper into our exploration of managing toxic relationships, let's consider the significance of strategic distance, a powerful tool for safeguarding our mental and emotional well-being while still maintaining some level of connection with toxic individuals. Strategic distance involves recognizing when it's necessary to create space between ourselves and toxic people. This space serves as a protective barrier, shielding us from their negative influence and allowing us to maintain our clarity and perspective. Imagine yourself in a dense forest surrounded by tangled undergrowth. Creating strategic distance is akin to stepping back from the thick of the forest to gain a clearer view of the landscape. From this vantage point, you can better assess the situation and navigate your way forward with greater ease. Strategic distance doesn't necessarily mean severing all ties with toxic individuals. Rather, it's about establishing boundaries and limiting the intensity of your interactions. Just as we regulate our exposure to sunlight to avoid sunburn, we regulate our exposure to toxic people to prevent emotional harm. By maintaining strategic distance, we give ourselves the space we need to prioritize our well-being 
and make informed decisions about how to proceed in challenging relationships. So let's embrace the power of strategic distance as we continue on our journey toward healthier, more fulfilling connections with others. As we navigate the complexities of dealing with toxic individuals, let's explore the concept of refocusing energy, a strategy that empowers us to redirect our focus away from futile arguments and unproductive interactions and toward endeavors that promote personal growth and well-being. Refocusing energy involves recognizing that engaging in arguments or attempting to change toxic individuals is often an exercise in futility. Instead of investing our time and energy in these fruitless endeavors, we can choose to channel our resources into activities that bring us joy, fulfillment and personal empowerment. Imagine yourself as a gardener tending to a plot of land rather than wasting energy trying to uproot stubborn weeds. You focus your attention on nurturing the flowers and plants that flourish under your care. Similarly, refocusing energy entails investing in pursuits that enrich your life and cultivate a sense of fulfillment, despite the presence of toxicity in your surroundings. By redirecting our focus towards activities that uplift and empower us, whether it's pursuing hobbies we're passionate about, nurturing meaningful relationships, or investing in our personal growth, we reclaim control over our lives and refuse to let toxic individuals dictate our emotional state. Refocusing energy is not about ignoring or denying the existence of toxicity. Rather, it's about consciously choosing where to direct our focus and energy in order to cultivate a sense of inner peace and fulfillment. So let's embrace the power of refocusing energy as we continue on our journey toward greater resilience and well-being. As we conclude our exploration of dealing with toxic people, I want to express my gratitude to you for joining me on this journey. We've covered valuable lessons on recognizing toxicity, setting boundaries, seeking support, cultivating emotional intelligence, adopting a solution-oriented mindset, and practicing empathy. Remember, dealing with toxic people is an ongoing process, and it's okay to revisit these lessons whenever you encounter challenging situations. By staying mindful of these principles, you empower yourself to navigate toxic interactions with grace and resilience. If you found this discussion helpful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to continue receiving valuable insights and tips for personal growth and well-being. Your support helps us reach more people and create a positive impact together. Thank you once again for your time and engagement. Let's continue to grow and thrive together.